the Bull Stars, with the one beer and welcome to episode 47 of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Last time, we finished up all the final investigation portion of the game, and now we are going to be moving on to the final trial section. And things are going to be getting good. So let's get going. Oh, come on! Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant, Vera Misham, innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Something inside me. Rising. Surfacing. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now. So close. October 9th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Bishop. The defense is right, your honor! The prosecution's letty to rock. Ross Drew Gavin. How is the defendant Vera Bishop's condition? At acute adequate in poisoning, according to her physician. She could die at any time. Thus, her absence from the courtroom today. What? They can't put her on trial without being here. It, it's unusual. They should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's how bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer, or they risk having no one left to try. A try without the vet that can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right, if Vera dies, the trial will be cancelled! I'm not going to let that happen! Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years! That he somehow was able to do with time traveling powers! How did he do that?! I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while there's still time! Very well, your opening statement, Bro Screw The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to poisoning? Because she couldn't live with her being guilty of what she done. But Vera was poisoned with Arnaquini! The exact poison that took her father's life! What about the confession going to ask for? Being the killer, she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come by. Mm, that's true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have had our verdict yesterday. <clears throat> well, Mr. Justice, if you have no objections, I see no reason to postpone a verdict. What we need to do is worry about what isn't the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense holds that Pierre Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to rule something. She was in court giving her testimony before us. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told who her mystery killer was. Yeah, we have- yeah, and our evidence has all been reorganized. We have our coffee mug, our red envelope, our grimaies, our letterboxes. Yeah, we have everything. Yellow envelope! The prosecution's objections are sustained. I ask the defense to prove its claims to the court. Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. I've got two things to prove here. Who did it and how? Which do I do first? How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm. Any comments before we begin, Mr. Gavin? Not the bottle or container of poison was found in the defendant's body. I see. So the, ve the vector poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Misham? Yes, your honor! Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Misham? What's this? My, what a beautiful ladle! I'd like to give whoever designed that a hand! Is that nail polish? Hmm, it's colorless. Ah! Oh, okay, Kristoff's nail polish is colorless. I, I forgot about that part. Kristoff wearing pink nail polish! That was just beautiful. Something the matter? No, no nothing. Nothing at all! So the killer put poison in this bottle and made her drink it? As Professor Gavin told us, this is nail polish. 
Nail polish? It's like paint for nails! No any women with red nails? Oh, my wife has red nails! I see, so she's been painting them all this time. You thought your wife had naturally red nails, Judge! Let's, uh, let's recall you this trial. Remember when Miro was testifying to the court? Court is now back in session. Miro seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingers nails clean off. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Oh! Oscar Gavin? When the busker had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I will I. Meredith! Have to check the defense nails at once. Mr. Justice! Yes? Yes? Do you know who did this? Do you know who what voice is in that nail polish? Yes! That bottle belongs to Vera Misham! Why do you ask? Know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No, she, she was checking. Mr. Justice, you are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chowder. You realize the way of this accusation. You here to let me show you. Understood, Your Honor. No problem. I know what I'm doing this time. Then let us ask who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? Right here! I like how Kristoff instantly makes the first thing on the list. What's this? Christoph Gavin? What's your game? My bro, there's no way you could do a thing like that! You still know that better than anyone else! Indeed. He is behind bars. I know! However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. What? Ask yourself, when he put the boys in the bottle, it could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps... It was seven years ago! But, but Crystal Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl! It's simply inconceivable! Oscar Gavin doesn't seem to think so! Why else would he look so constipated? That face tells me one thing! Crystal Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all! Hmm. Well, Oscar Gavin, if you feel there is a clear and present pressing need, then we may have to summon Crystal Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that I swallowed swa swa even myself. Okay. The defense's wish is granted. Let's prison our kiss our guy and take the stand! Meredith, begin proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Chris of Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at the central prison. <laughs> Ah, your honor. How nice to see you again. Uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you are- I think you already know Mr. Christoph Gavin! Ah, Mr. Justice. I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself being the lapdog of my sworn enemy. So tell me, Mr. Justice, how much are you being paid? Screw it! Oh, I don't have to answer that! Just as I thought, Mr. Justice. Ugh! Why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Stand up my lip, Polly! You can do it! Does this ball look familiar? Eridani nail polish. Why, yes. I use it myself. As did the late defendant, I hear. She got dead yet! And? Was there something concerning this bottle you wished to ask me about? I admit, I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste indeed! The nail polish was out! Mira Misham was poisoned! Are quinine, was it? Yo, you're well for about the case, Mr. Gavin. Even in solitary, much comes to my desk, and I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier? Maybe you can explain this. You're, you're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah, uh, and you agree with this accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. You are suspected of the poisoning of the defendant, Bureau Misham. Please testify in this matter of court. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. 
The prosecution's case holds. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely, you aren't going to uh, suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too. Well, I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the Mishams. Why would I know of art people? I have better things to do than go down to some grungy studio. Is that and that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice, begin your cross-examination. I'm accusing Crystal Gav, my ex-boss, again! I know he poisoned the Mishams! The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention why! Yeah, it's a bit of a running joke in the series with this state with this statement right here from Kristoff. Basically, where they're like, "Oh, Kristoff doesn't know how to speak." Where basically they act like this is not grammatically correct. When in all actuality, it, it not only is it grammatically correct, but in Investigations One, which came out out after this game, Edgeworth actually has a very similar line, which you'll see in this flashback clip now. True notes is not a proficient pianist, make detective. Okay, as you can see, basically, Edward says, the ex uh, says pretty much the exact same line. He says pretty much the exact same line in regards to that piano in terms about airlines, and yet no one bats an eye. Which I've always found funny, basically, that Edgeworth just never gets that sort of flack, yet Kristoff gets, like, gets this, all this thing of, oh, Kristoff cannot speak. But I am going to be pressing everything, because Kristoff is a delight. Tell me, is this nail polish expensive? It's worth two of you, Mr. Justice. Eridani is a nail polish of the highest order. Not only is it fabulously expensive, but it is made in ex extremely limited quantities. And you and Vera just happen to both use it? This can't be a coincidence! I'm guessing it's not a coincidence. Huh? It's simple. Eridani is the best nail polish one can buy, correct? Then, if one wanted the best nail polish, one would buy it. That makes sense. Why, well, it's a bit like my feelings towards my brand name Gavel here. And my silk top hat! Are we all done showing off our refined tastes? Please, continue with your tasteful testimony. Can't you still make contact with the outside world in solitary? Ah, so you're an accomplice on the outside, is that your latest accusation? I am allowed a certain modicum of letter writing. Objection. But the content of those letters are closely checked. It would be difficult to send a hit request. Prosecutor Gavin's on a warpath, isn't he? Yeah, you think so too, Trucy. I bet I know why. He must be nervous with his big brother watching. Hmm, and maybe that's a weakness I can turn to my advantage. Are we cool with that? May I continue? The defendant is not dead yet! There are no known cases of someone surviving Artaquinine poisoning. You seem to know a lot about Artaquinine! It's a hobby, Mr. Justice. I know a lot about a lot of things. I am a very refined man of culture. You may not grasp this having worked in the Right Anything Agency that Havel, that he call, that Wright calls an office, but unlike him, I devote my time to the arts because I am a man of class, whereas he, judging by his attire and mannerisms, and boorish mannerisms, is a man of ass. So excuse me for having a modicum of knowledge, Mr. Justice. Which is why I suggest we pick up the pace, or else you'll be short one defendant, for what she's worth. The witness will refrain for speaking ill of the ill. My apologies. Shall I continue? Vera had no reason to want to commit suicide, and also, why would I commit suicide by doing their nails? A person with class, Mr. Justice. The answer is quite simple, basically. Allow me to explain, beginning with, why did she do it? The answer is quite simple, she couldn't live with her own guilt. Next, why did she use nail polish to poison herself? This too is simple, She so she could die doing something that she liked. Something that she liked? Once she saw that the trial wasn't going her way, she knew she would die. And it's not easy to bring poison to a courtroom. Must I explain further? Hmm, I believe that's clear enough, crystal clear. Wow, the two brothers together is like a two-man wrecking team. They could use a little more teamwork, though. Yes, they have their own bros attack. 
You know how Mario and Luigi and the superstars in the Mario and Luigi games they have their their bro items and bro attacks. Crystal and Claw here have their own. Both Mira and Mr. Michelle were poisoned with Arquity. That likely can't be a coincidence. The defense is repeating fallacious statements based on conjecture. The prosecution requests concrete, unambiguous proof as the witnesses claimed. Uh, Objection to that! The defense will please present concrete proof. That prosecutor guy doesn't seem strange to you? It's like he's all grown up. I think that's how prosecutors are supposed to be, actually. No, he is acting different than usual. I'll bet it has a lot to do with his brother Chris out being in the room. Well, let's make this testimony count, Polly. Right, quick and painless! My bracelet should do the trick! Okay, I'm pushing my ex-boss! His testimony seems watertight, but he's lying! I'm sure I'll be able to see something, as long as I focus! The final bra perception por perceived portion of the game. Gotta go in with the bracelet here, and then you- Yeah, and then look at Chris on his eyes! Look at the hate in his eyes! And then basically you go down to his hand. His scar hand. Just gotta wait. Waiting. There we go. It was you who killed Drew Jam! A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right, we said her father, too. Your hands had some naturally, and a little devil appeared to give me the news. And, let's assume, for the sake of argument, that you saw me being tense. What does this mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Bijan found a nail polish, too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man! You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth! Ah, uh, then I must be quite talented indeed. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th, while well, I was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. Now, unless I ha now if I had your had your new mentor's time traveling powers, then I could have done it. If that's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. But we found a way all the same, and I found it too. This is how you poison Mr. Misham. The stamp of death! I'm sure this Camaro stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Bijam died, he was seen writing a letter. Artiquity was found on the stamp, Mr. Gavin! So I am to understand the stamp was the murder weapon? And really, you think that Chris would be like, hold the phone, hold the phone, who conducted this investigation? Who found this stamp? Where was the stamp found and who was running the investigation? Because really, you think that Apollo brings up Phoenix, and then Chris is like, Oh, yes, yes, we're going to trust Wright, the disbarred attorney who's going around forging evidence and messing with a time stream. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, and yes. This stamp was found in your presence up. That is all, Your Honor. Actually, you know what? Turn the timer off because I'm fit I'm going to do this entire episode in one sitting. This is going to be the final episode. Order, order, order! P -p Poison on the back of that stamp! After Drew Bichette was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Phoenix Wright! Daddy! That's where he found the stamp! You made Drew Bichette write you a letter! That's how you killed him! What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Though, considering his quote-unquote musical talents, I don't believe that it was already present to begin with. Allow me to clarify this matter of justice. All you need to do is recall witness Sparks Brussels' testimony. Well, that's the thing. See, after he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham's out there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp! A so-called postage stamp, end quote. He was, he was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I am arriving at is that this Camaro stamp was in its frame. It was a mere co coincidence that it was used that night. That would seem to be the case. 
Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence. I, once again, Mr. Justice, I am not your mentor, new mentor, Mr. Wright. I cannot control the time stream. I cannot bluff my way through trials. I am a human being with regular human powers. He does have a point. How would you? How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned this murder. W what? Really, Clavier? You should be seeing through these weak, spinned bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Bichon would use that stamp that night? We saw Chris O'Gallon locked away in his cell. Well, it seems that the defense has run out of things to say. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Christoph Clavier. Honestly, I wanted to believe you, but the defense wasn't trying to get away with the bluff. You there, Christoph! W what are you saying, Fosky Gallon? Her forehead? What was your accusation again? Huh? Oh, oh, it was that! This poison slam killed Drew and to which my, bro my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Dream and Sham would use that stamp. Yes, that's right, which is why he couldn't have had it planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned? Why? Oh, uh, why couldn't it have just been a coincidence? The defendant's guess is simply that Dream and Sham died by the stamp, that's all. Coincidence? Christoph, you tried to slip one out from under these accusations by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, that is! Don't you dare say I bluff Clavier! I am not him! What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Christoph. Heh. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency and effectiveness, Clavier. Learn them, live them, love them, Clavier. But what, Mr. Govan? That's impermissible testimony. Very well. I shall take this claim head on, then. Justice. W what? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? A poly motive! He's talking about a motive! Mm, indeed. It's hard to see how an attorney could come to want to kill a painter. No, here's something! Why did he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose! So, so, what does it mean? It means that there's a weak spot. Maybe I have to have evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. This is a vital, if not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when make your statement. And what motive did Vera have? I say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital! Well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. And let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have to wind to murder Drew B. Sham? Clear. When we consider why the same came to Drew Misham studio in the first place, and why was that? Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job create forged evidence. I've seen that before. A page from a diary, wasn't it? Magnific Romaya's diary. Ah, uh, when Attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge. Yes. Happy day for us all. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes, but did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven! And no one bothered to prove it! The defense attorney on that case was Phoenix Wright. Who other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? Mr. Wright has no money! Mr. Wright doesn't have a hundred thousand dollars he never had! Reason I know, he doesn't pay me! If he had that kind of money, he'd be paying me and I'd be demanding a payment! This is the first page. And this is the second! Those were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Misham by the client who requested that forgery. He closed the Amazon on the poison commander of Sam! Drew Misham drew his last breath just the other day! However, the mom for his murder was already seven years old. 
seven years old. The client who requested this forgery was the ver was very cautious. He tried to raise anything and anyone who had connections to the forgery to keep them from talking, but he made a mistake. The stamp was a picture. The, the stamp is a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. The killer's time bomb with the weight. The poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame, where it sat for seven whole years. Hair forehead. Do you understand what you're telling us? There's one who skinned up the fourth diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp. And it was Phoenix Wright who presented the fourth diary was seven, seven years ago. And the two statements together, the one who skinned killed Jumi Sham. Was the other the Phoenix Wright? And then Christoph, yes, Clavier! This is the smartest thing you have ever said, Clavier! And I support this claim 110%! Right with an animal! <laughs> Sorry, but that's not going went down! Ugh, then how will it go down? I checked the little records of that case where I found this! Seven years ago, just before the show began! Ow, oh, I'm dying! I am here! What's this? What's this? I don't know, I got over there in the hallway! And he told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with spiky hair! And one more thing! I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the file from your, I received the files from your previous defense attorney only yesterday. I understand I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards, and that was enough. The issue was put on the case the day before the trial started. Why with all his cases? He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before? Now here's the question! Just who was Shane Nickmore's previous defense attorney? No! That, that can't be! Oh, but it can. But it's all true! There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar! It was you! Christoph Gavin! Order, order, order! What's the meaning of this? Witness! I mean, defendant! Or a former lawyer! Let me begin by denying this. It's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin! And impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly did you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Hmm, that would be difficult. I'm afraid this live inquiry won't yield. Objection! Hair for it. Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's with Foscure Gavin? He looks clammy. Evidence! And that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that poultry seven years ago! Clavier... Just prove it! Clear up these doubts now! I swear, I'm off this case! He must have thought of some evidence, a poly! Oscar Gavin looks like he's in physical pain, a darkness! I have to pull that darkness out of him, and prove it's the only way I can! What proof does- what proves that Christoph links Drew me sham? Well, well, Mr. Justice, you claim Christoph Gavin requested a forgery of Drew me sham seven years ago. Prove it! It can't be proven! Simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not- Are you telling the truth about our justice? I am! Then! Then I say we give him the benefit of that! Very well. But if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty! Your Honor. You do the defense an injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about his claim. Should his penalty not match his passion? The big penalty! Oh, I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time! Well, Mr. Justice, fine, Your Honor! I have to prove it's an ACOM link! Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Sham! And I have something that clearly does the job! Very well, Mr. Justice. Present your evidence. Show us the link between our witness and Drew Misham. This evidence proves there's a link! That scratch.
wrap of paper. I'm afraid I can't let you submit this. Really, Mr. Justice? Are we going through this again? Are you going to seriously present forged evidence again? In this court again? And wrong me again? Is there some problem? Miss, there is. Mr. Justice? I, I'm getting a sense of deja vu, Mr. Justice. Did we not have this discussion back when you first had me thrown in prison? How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Hey! That's Daddy's handwriting! He's not even trying to hide it anymore! Mr. Wright's handwriting was the meal list! Uh, I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright? When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. That's a felony! Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habit! Playing cards and now poorly written letters, Mr. Wright, you're not even trying anymore! Really, at least give me some de some modicum of respect! Well, if it is... Well, if it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Reproduction? When Mr. Wright visited Chris Christoph Gallant's cell, he had brought with him a small video camera. What? He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin, and the contents of your personal mail! Even my comments about Vongo! Well, regardless, this mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video, a man with no authority who ever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex attorney suspected of forgery. A man who apparently can travel through time at will. Hmm, Foster Gavin? Foster Gavin? And embarrassing, as embarrassing as this is for me to say. I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your honor, your decision, please. The defense's claim is denied. What? Only actual evidence is permitted in a court of law. Please remove the defense's evidence from the record. Better look next time, Justice. Well, we've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination, but the defense appears to be lacking proof. I am forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Tommy, do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence! I don't have anything I can use on him! Very well, this ends the special witness's cross-examination. The show's over, yet the gods gives me more! Only now that I understand why. What's your Gavin? Frankly, I'm relieved! This has been bothering me for seven whole years, and I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance! Let's clean out the family closet, Christoph! Clavier, you're spinning out of control. And Clavier, why are you playing that drivel? Why are you playing that slap for the ears? Seriously, Clavier, you know I hate this song, and I hate how you have it somehow rigged to play over the court speakers. Why can't we have my theme playing? Solitary confinement. It is a theme of class, a theme of mystery and intrigue. It actually, but it actually stimulates the mind, whereas yours causes it to rot into a fine, thinly pasted slush. Calm yourself before you say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose concern, mine or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor, your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Polly, did you see that? He's trying to press Oscar Gavin! Oscar Gavin! Try to remember! What's really important to you? You amuse me, Hell for it. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I have it, not even facts. Seven years ago? Finally, you just couldn't resist, could you? Hell right. Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Might I request we put the cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. State your name and occupation for the record. I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Yesterday, who's had popcorn? Didn't you find anything unnatural about it? Unnatural? 
Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment, you call and drew me sham. It was almost as if... Almost as if fat. Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Oh, correct. I know that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that for its diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. I know because you told me, Krista. What? What? It was the night before the trial. Clavier. Christoph! I think you're at the Fosca's office the day before the trial. <laughs> I love Clavier! Oh, he has his guitars all present! Ah, uh, I won't be appearing in the trial, actually. Huh? Why not? I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought you information. Information? The attorney who will be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen. I want you to call in a special witness. Then. I wondered about it at the time. How did Christoph know so much? What's your government? Christoph! We were supposed to face each other in that trial! A fair fight, brother to brother! I deserve that, but you were going to use that page on me? Flavier, do you know what I had to deal with? I had to deal with your music for oh for so many years. I deserve this. You left me Bob's victim's belongings. You showed me all your research on the case. <laughs> you shared the five squares that Mom gave you. <laughs> the victim's belongings, which would have included Magnavi's diary, wouldn't it? Mr. Govan. My my, Clavier, you disappoint me. You find trees yet miss the forest. You're the one missing the force, Mr. Gavin! You can't sweep this under the rug! Not anymore! Tell me what was going on behind that trial! Why not? I've achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Polly! I think we're following a shower of what on the black belly of this thing, Trucy! We've done everything we could! I hope it's enough! Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zachary Maye. Two cards! One card! I love how Zach doesn't even change up his lines! Showdown time! Enough! You lose, Gavin! Thanks for the work! Now go! Bye bye! To be honest, I don't know how his know what his reasons were to this day. As far as I could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost that game of poker. Which Sally, which basically a lot of people will voice that, oh, Kristoff, he was fired because Zach didn't trust him. Because Zach knew that Kristoff was a slime ball. But knowing Zach, I wouldn't be surprised if he did fire Kristoff because of that poker game. I'm not going to be defended by some little prick who doesn't know how to play poker. But the sad part is, Zach had the real diary page! How are you giving Kristoff that? Even Kristoff could have won that trial! Kristoff wouldn't even have to forge! Why would Kristoff have had forged evidence if he had the diary page? If Zach would have said, Hey, Kristoff, old boy, here's the diary page! Kristoff would have been like, Oh, thank you! Oh, thank you! Now I don't have to spend a hundred grand on this fake forge, on this forged diary page that I took time to write! I can come to another conclusion. Guy used to say something. If you want to know a man, you have to complete. You have to compete. Zach wasn't watching his points or the cards. He was watching the man behind the cards, Christoph Gavin. But Zach even voiced that he wasn't that he wasn't gonna care about his work. He was gonna be playing in that courtroom regardless. So why would Zach even fire Christoph? Why would he fire Christoph just to basically allow just to, if he was gonna flee the trial anyways with what work could be declared? It makes no sense. And you know why it doesn't make sense? Because Zach Gromaya is a big fat jerk. Doo -doo -doo. 
Okay, let's go over the grand total of people that Zach has screwed over in the years. Zach has screwed over Phoenix, Trucy, Clavier, Kristoff, Vera Misham, Drew Misham, Sparks Brussel, <laughs> Apollo to an extent. Is Apollo is going through all this stuff. A lot! Nine people have been screwed over by this man! Nine people! Really, Zachary is a monster! He was the jerk of all jerks! The Magnifi! Oh no, 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 the Magnifi rants, that's gonna be coming up very soon, don't you worry! I couldn't believe it. Phoenix Wright, a secondary attorney who relies on luck and bluffs? He dismissed me and went on with that pitiful excuse, a uh, man? He deserved to die for that error alone. Hold it! So the one request that forgery was... Oh, I'm not admitting to anything. My point is, these two men shamed me, and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zachary both deserved what they got. So you asked Mr. Richard to forge that evidence so you could win? Well then, when you were dismissed as Zachary's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap! You fed me information about that forgery you made, then you gave your dirty evidence to him! You are free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had that all I had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Incredible! If it, I wasn't already laughing at Vip. What's your govern? Perfectly. You're mad, Christoph! Stop fooling yourself! What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did this trial end? Cancelled, when the defendant vanished. Ah, I get it, so Christoph. You've been living in fear for seven years! It is not fear, Clavier! It is paranoia! There is a difference! Learn it! What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation tarnished! You couldn't leave things to chance! Now you watched everyone involved in the case for seven years! You know, there's, I always felt like I was being watched. Like he was, like, that's what he was saying every day for seven years. But I know the dude! Daryl's sure he's being watched! End quote. Don't you wonder why Zekramaya got rubbed out after 10 years? Right after coming into contact with me? Well, wait just a minute! Zekramaya was seen by this reporter! How is it possible? Was he alive after being gone 7 years? Finally! I knew this moment was coming! I just didn't think we'd gear so fast! Zekramaya got missing for 7 years! Trucy's father! What's wrong, Polly? Go get him! Right! Leave it to me! Allow me to refresh the course memory. Six months ago, Christoph Gowan was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember quite well. Shady Smith, was it? Poisoned in a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The details don't really matter right now. What matters is that travel was Zachariah! What is it, Polly? Huh? Keep going. We'll talk about it later. Did she already know? Someone please explain this. Mr. Justice, can you explain this? It all started seven years ago. The Great Magician, Magnificent Maya's Death Star. Ah, oh, sorry. The Great Magnificent Maya's Death Sorry, I thought I was living in my clavier voice. Magnificent Maya's Death and his suspect, Zachary Maya, his suspect. Whoever defends Zachary Court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gowan did the unthinkable. He forced evidence. Through Misham. Through Misham? Actually, it was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, did you, Mr. Gavin? Precautions? To keep people from talking, of course. Yes, because the hermits who were forgers, who would basically lose everything if they admitted to forging that stuff, they would have talked, Clavier, Christoph. Oh, yeah, the people who never left their house. These two know too much. Leave them alive and they'll eat nothing but trouble. That's what you planned your poisoning of the forgers. At the Quinin. Applied to a commemorative stamp. But luck was on Mr. Michel's side. The bomb didn't go off. 
His daughter. She saved him by taking the stamp. I see. But that was the only that was the only bomb he's up. The Aradoni nail polish, of course. You noticed something when you requested that forgery. When Jeremy Sham is nervous, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. Ah, oh, that nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped. She, she was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been, well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. That person gave me a good luck charm for when I absolutely had to go outside. It protects me. Yes, apparently she received something, a gift. She won't tell me what it is, what it was. It was from that client, the one who wanted that note made. It was his insurance. Insurance. As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And then their boss would do the rest. His time bomb sat there for seven years, and then they went off almost simultaneously. If you are finished, may I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. I prefer sitting in my comfy chair that is worth more than you, Mr. Justice, and your horrid, horridly de de depraved, debauched mentor twice over. Mr. Gavin, I heard a single thing we've said! Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. What? Clavier, surely you understand. We are back to the evidence. The lacking evidence. Nothing proves a link between him and the other queen that took through Misham's life. Objection! What about the restaurant? You killed Zach Kramaye! To keep him from talking! I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again if you like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shady Smith, about whom we know little else. You can seriously think I knew he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why'd you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Misham, suspected in the murder of her father. My trial's been finished for six months now. I'm afraid we have stayed considerably from our purpose here. This court con concurs with the witness. It is the defendant Vera Misham who is on trial here. No, but you were doing so good, Polly! As long as there is no evidence to support the accusation against him, this court of inquiry cannot find Vera Misham innocent. Your Honor, Fish Rice spent seven years collecting the evidence! You still don't get it, do you? Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Misham to bite her nails? W what? It wasn't me, I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips was you. What? What? Evidence is everything. There is nothing more. I believe this discussion has reached its conclusion. Y your Honor! Mr. Justice, you have performed admirably well for an office attorney. I respect your partner, Vera Schweitz's determination as well. However, however, without direct proof, you have nothing. Isn't that right, Clavier? Unfortunately, yes, Kristoff, you're right. That is, you would have been right until now. What? Did the news not reach your desk in solitary? The eyes of the nation are on this courtroom today. This is the trial case for a new judicial system. That's right! I totally forgotten. And so is the judge! The jury system! Jurists, you say? The current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. The new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of a joke? What could we possibly gain by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless emotional mob of irrational mouth breathers? Common sense is of something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted to uh, the law. Nonsense! There's only room for two in this court. Me and the law! And have you seen the average person in our world? 
They are insane! They are legally insane! Have you seen half the witnesses brought into this courtroom? Are we going to put the Victor Kudos and the Wendy Old Bags as these jurists? Keep the riffraff out! Out, I say! <laughs> they are not in- they're not in the court, actually! They're watching everything by video camera! Hi, Kristoff! How can you allow this? Incidentally, the one who responds for making this happen was Phoenix Wright! Phoenix Wright? So, everything was leading up to this, of course. Right. Right. Right! Right! <laughs> I would accept! I can accept! This is no court! Law! Law is everything! Law is absolute! And then meanwhile, while this is happening, Samugi, you know that song? Like, Pagliano song? Easy Pagliano! <laughs> like, Samugi, she just came, No! It's Pagliano! No! No! Samugi's just spinning around, No! It's Pagliano! <laughs> Why, Paulo? Why do you do this to Who's Bando? His only cry was being beautiful! <laughs> yes, the Moogie just crying. <laughs> and then Kibo, he just... He, and then basically... And then Suichi just walks in. Uh, hey, Samugi, I... Uh, okay, this doesn't seem like a good time. So, then Suichi just closes the door to your lab behind it. He's like, close it off and why are you locking myself in my lab? You ignorant swine soil your court? Please stop. It's over. Claw here. The law is absolute. You can't be serious. What? Ah, uh, I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. The law is the end product of many years of history. The fruit of human knowledge. Like a gem, polished to a gleam through trials and errors. It is the thought root we receive and pass on and face in our time. And it is always changing, growing, nurturing is our task as human beings. Except for you, Kristoff, you aren't changing. You stop. You're not needed anymore. Yeah, we get twitching Kristoff, who looks like he's about to go live. Yeah, Kristoff. Oh, yes, Clav here. Yes, Clav here. I'm not needed anymore. You know what's not needed anymore? Finish running his bullcrap. He goes about traveling through time. How can I compete with that? I couldn't think of anything to say! I wanna save the game! I wanna save the game! And the reason I wanna save the game here is because we have a bad ending! Maybe because I still haven't seen enough, but someday I'll know what law is and I'll fight to change it if I have to! Two games from now! I see no need for further prolonging of this trial. This began as a trial of Vera Misham, accused of murdering her father. The part painter drew Misham. However, several other incidents have revi uh, were reviewed, and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your decision. Jurors to the court! With the death of Drew Misham, how do you find the defendant, Vera Misham? Innocent or guilty? I turn, you, turn to you now to consider this matter. Yeah, but once you realize that this trial was basically Kristoff, ba Phoenix trying to just bring Kristoff's crimes to, to light, you have to all, you have to really wonder. Kristoff, Phoenix was behind every step of this, basically informing the jurists, uh, basically with that Maison thing. He was informing them with everything from his perspective. It was biased. Phoenix had everything they gained from this case. He picked the jurists, even. Remember, Phoenix picked the jurists. He, it was completely stacked in his favor. So really, anyways, Jurist Chambers. We're in the Matrix again. This ends the trial for this case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. Defendant Yermi Sham is currently in intensive care. If a decision cannot be reached today, it may never be reached. The factors of all are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? If so, she is guilty. Or was there another reason for Mr. Misham's death? Did, did another person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been provided for each of you to input your decisions. That is all. Please, wait. Yes, jurist number six. 
There's something in the jurist's handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I looked into all your dossiers. None of you were involved with the development of this case. With the development of the case, I see. Does that answer your concern? It's time for your verdicts. Make your decision in the case of against Vera Misham. After seven years, the truth is ready to be heard. Judge wisely, judge well, and most importantly, judge in my favor. That's why I brought all you here! Right! Why am I here? I don't want to be in the jury system! Edgeworth, you're going to do it! You're going to vote for that non-guilty! Anyways, yeah, as you can see from that outline, the lossy, basically, that basically, Lamuor is one of the jurists! Confirm! Get that bad ending! Yes, you can see the Lassia, that Lamuor is the Lassia! The big one is that Lamuor was a, is Apollo and Trucy's mother! And then basically, before we go into the bad ending, but basically, I just want to see this, I just want to see this, basically, Yes, you learn that Magnifi, his daughter was alive. And so what did Magnifi do? He shipped his blind Anyazic daughter off to some foreign country. Basically, no form of identification, no anything. Just left her in the streets, just left her there to do nothing. And then, basically, just he goes back and Clay, and then uses that information. Thanks for death, and then blackmails Zack and Valon with it. This is not a kind man. All of this was called because Vol because Magnifi wanted a freaking grab for power. It's only the first verdict under the jury system. A hung jury. The final verdict would have to wait until the following day. But fate had different plans. That night, defendant Vera Misham's condition worsened. She died in her hospital bed. Her verdict was postponed for eternity. Yeah, exactly. That's what happens. That's your bad ending. You, you, you basically you have where Thalassia t has her jerk ways, and plus Thalassia technically sure Thalassia herself is a citizen of the country, but she is Lamuor. She was Lamuor. She didn't was technically classified not as a citizen. <laughs> but really, what the heck is? Yeah, Phoenix just brings out Paul and Trucy's mother to basically be one of the jurors. Yeah, because she wouldn't be biased in any way. And since she was able to see the panel, she got the surgery, she got her memory restored. She knew what, what was happening. She knew! <laughs> and basically, Phoenix is just placing these kind of jurists in, in charge of the case. Come on, come on. Okay, come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Phoenix's jury. Meet my jurist, Kristoff. First, we have my best friend, Chief, Pro Chief Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Hello there. Next, we have his subordinate, Gumshoe, a friend of mine. Hey, pal. Next, we have Francisco, who I paid... Who basically, I basically, who wanted to just join this, who basically, I had paid five dollars to, and gave her permission to whip me for five minutes. I am here to acquit! <laughs> Victor Kudo, who I promised a muffin, I'm not dealing with any of this! I'll do in my noodle vendor, I'm not gonna deal with them. This is gonna be easy as fire! <laughs> And so on. Yes, Francisca, she just hit guilty off by default. It was her instinct. Francisca, we were supposed to all you get unanimous non guilties. I'm sorry, Miles Edgeworth, it's instinct. Yeah, but then, like, and then Phoenix holding back to tell Paul the truth. Phoenix finally tells the truth when he sees a Paul. That Paul basically. He is. He basically. He has a lot of photos of the of Lamuor downloaded his computer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's sick. That is sick. Almost as sick as Claw Dead Jimmy.
Yeah, Maya and Pearl are, the, are two of the jurists as well. Okay, come on. Come on, guys, select the non guilty. And so a verdict was reached on October 9th, 2 14 p.m. The verdict worked under the jury system. Innocent by unanimous decision. Oh, that's a hung this jury in the end, but yet unanimous in the freaking good end. Phoenix and his stacked jury. His, pow his power of power. The record will show that when the verdict was announced, special witness Christoph Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than any he heard before or since. A laugh that echoed in the court halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. October 10th, 8.30 a.m., the morning after the trial. In intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Fear me, Sharon opened her eyes. Okay, we'll get through the rest of this, and then it's all good. And then we'll, we'll be ending the series off. Vera, I'm so glad I... Don't cry, Polly. I'm happy too and proud you did well, Polly. When I when I thought about what what Vera, I Hey now, don't you start crying too! Oh, I'm sorry I had to see us like this. But Vera! Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If I had, you never would have bitten your nails. No, I was wrong. Knock inside like that, changing, clinging to my good luck charm. Vera! When I opened my eyes and I saw you, I finally understood. It's important to be part of the world, to see things with your own eyes. It looks like that poison had some effect after all. It killed off whatever was holding Vera back from life. I knew you'd pop through, Vera. I mean, that's what Polly was fighting for the whole time. Your future. I won't forget. Here, let me thank you. No, really, it's okay! Oh, come on! Why not me? I freaking saved your ass in court, Vera! Ooh, look, it's me! I love it, thanks! What the hell? Is that me? She really captured your essence, Polly! What? Well, I think so, at least. I'm yours, Vera! Let's see if I save your ass next time! That reminds me. Do you know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean Daddy? Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I meant. No, it's okay. I thought looking away from the things I've done. I hope I can look him in the eye someday and apologize. I'm, I'm sure we have you hear that. He brought me all those things to me when he came to visit earlier. Phoenix just regifting Maya Steel Satellite DVDs. <coughs> Sorry. You mean that sack of videos Mr. Mike finished watching them all? Of course he did. Maya made him. Yeah, you watch your video and they're gonna heal you. You know, I knew my real my sperm donor was alive. Huh? I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. You did what? Oh! I'm not telling. He promised me that day he went away. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy. But know this, I will be watching, and one day I shall return to screw both your life and that old boy's. You're the next Grimaia, after all. Screw Volant! Uh, oh, Trucy, in the end, he could keep that promise, could he? It's okay, Daddy is my... Daddy is my new daddy now. You can't really play the piano. Not you can't. Oh, and I got you too, even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. Well, I made your list. Hey, I kind of think of it. Where is daddy? The one who can't play. You know, Polly? I think he said you had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's a new mommy. <laughs> yes, Fien if, if, if Phoenix ever told Trucy about Thalassia, Thalassa, basically, she truly to make her goal to ship Phoenix and Thalassa in order to make him the true daddy. <laughs> oh, 
Hehe. <laughs> oh, Trucy. Mm, yes, Mira? I was wondering, could you show him to me once more? Sir Hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here he goes to do it. Do as I impress you, Mr. Hat. I, Mr. Hat, I'm fine. Objection to him. Not, no long enough, and I like Miss Magic Underwear better anyways. That's Magic Prize, Polly. No objection. How sad. So, your memory's returned. Mr. Wright, was this all part of your plan, too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn as Lamure. But you knew my true identity, did you not? That that is why you chose me as one of your jurors. Yes, in the game that resonates. The Phoenix stacked that jury. He stacked it like a like a plate of pancakes. Ah, you're thinking into it too much. Besides, there were no guarantees that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course, it is a happy thing. For so long, I thought I was alone, but now I know I have children, two dear children. I'm so proud of them, except Apollo. Apollo disappoints me for some reason. This too, I think, is thanks to you. Are you going to tell them? They do not know? Nope! <laughs> they don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. I will go to them when the time is right. Until then, I will never go to them. Because the Lhasa has never even been mentioned ever since. Don't worry. I'll take care of them for you. They're, they're very important to me too. Screw you, Apollo. I'm going to screw you over for the next several years. A little annoying at times, but still, I have to keep an eye on her at least. Because I'm the only one who knows how she really feels on the inside. As for Apollo, he can do whatever he wants. He's just there for the ride. Your bracelet. Yes? I've seen a lot of that mysterious things these past seven years. But your bracelets were the strangest of all. Apollo doesn't even get a blinking sprite. Apollo gets nothing. Apollo just gets a still image. I remember meeting him half a year ago, now in Christoph Gavin's office, where he didn't blink, and his forehead was still unusually large. I love how they don't even give Apollo a blinking sprite. They don't even give Apollo a standard blinking sprite. What would sprite in this game? He's not worthy of the sprite. And then I met you. Two fates destined to intertwine. And I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing, that bullet, yet it walks towards where I was away, and my dad dumped me in the middle of a strange country. I think he shoved me in a crate. Yeah, knowing Zack, knowing Magnific, he just shoved me in a shipping crate. He just put, like, one, a single air hole, and then just shoved her forcefully on a truck. He didn't even put a fragile sign. He just put her right in that crate. Didn't care what was going to happen. Ten years ago, during a simple rehearsal, it was a miracle no one died, but I... But I didn't survive that incident. That is why I left my troop, my family. No. Now my memory is returned. I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Speaking of miracles, Vera and Michelle regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, fate. Sometimes a life is taken, sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they've got something worth living for. And that's pretty much the end. And that's pretty much the end of my story. For now, anyways. I've still got a long way to go on this power line. Well, it needs some work. And I've got five more backstories that they're going to whip up. But there's hope now we lost it. But somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. Yeah, I think I'll keep at this lawyer stuff for a while. Oops. Training time. Gotta go. Court is now. Here comes Justin. Yes, credits. I'll talk about my thoughts of the series after the credits are done. I'm glad you're staying with the AC Polly, not that you have a choice. It's like, like I found my long lost big little brother. <laughs> oh, and don't you worry about Troop Gramaye. Trucy's on the case. Now that I have this, thanks to sperm donor. Trucy Gramaye. Frankly, I've got my doubts, but hack Gramaye. No, that'll pack him in. It's not every day you get to try the Torxhaz into one of our gigs, Ja. 
That's why it's over. The Gavinis are breaking up. Their news caused a run on tissues at Supermarket Station Y. And I was like, FINALLY! YES! YES! And I was cheering in the streets. And Paul, YES! You're the real stars now. I look forward to our next chance to do Paul, YEAH! Come on, Emma, we got a party! I brought balloons, Emma! And I brought snack -coos. Oh, I think one is coming up soon. One's gonna be coming up soon. The freaking final moment of cringe with Walkie. Well, it's finally over. You know, think about it. I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted and I've got time on my hands, maybe I'll take some lessons. Or maybe I'll take the bar exam. Again. And have Edgeworth help me pass with his influence. Okay, next one. I think the next one is going to be the Kataki, so yeah. No, it's Emma. So, I was standing around eating snack coos the other day. When I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch and better yet make them ding. Emma, stop playing God. I have the bio science. I think the preserves might be one of the things. Emma, stop. Try to be God! You're playing God, Emma! You don't know what you're gonna unleash upon the world! Ricky, that's gonna cause a zombie outbreak! Dead Rising, Ace Attorney! That's how it's gonna happen! All ruined from Golden Snackoos! In unlikely event you are 40 crushing fits, come to Borscht Bowl Club! The only thing colder than the restaurant is Borscht! Da, but grave greater challenges being required! Then come to the hideout, you know, the one you'd ask for. Okay, come on, next picture, next picture. Okay, yeah, we're coming up to it. One more, the next one is gonna be So, Kataki Base is getting back to its eastern roots. Spread the culture and all. Oh, yo, boss, culture time! This is how we write root, capish. But we're still about giving back to the people. Yo, boss, be our time! And this is how we write people, alright? Not that Walkie's paying any attention. Oh, kids! Oh, Walkie has his own freak. Has his own twisted vision. <laughs> and of course, Walkie has it where basically he goes out in a big burning ball of cringe. Piss off, Chinese casual king with a flat like three million years ago. Believe that, man. You wanna make it today? You gotta keep it real. You gotta know what I mean. Yo, that's why I made the Gucci cracker for real. I know it don't look like no cracker tea. Wait, you want me to go to OG Muffin? <laughs> yes, Waki. <laughs> yes, Waki going around calling Japanese character Chinese. Waki's a Japanese descended guy calling his uh, on the language of his people Chinese. I don't know where all oh, the food's coming from. You ask me, there's only one food, and that's noodles. Noodles forever. And I got a new one, too. See, this time I just put a big old chunk of salt in the bowl. Why pretend? All these news is all about the salt! Salt forever! Salt for life! L2 is gonna turn into Dr. Salty! He's gonna die on that Mr. Freeze suit, he's gonna be fired up the last of ice! You know it's gonna be happening! It's gonna happen one of these days! And of course, Wesley in the park! My exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me the unequivocal per in my apartment. You see, they used to call me Wesley Stinker and Wesley Stinky, Stinky Hands! But no longer, I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Wesley Sicko reporting, yes, curiosity is a sickness, and I am the cure! Wesley, the only cure for you is a restraining order, and no distance would ever work on it. <laughs> okay. Next one on the list. Next one on the list. Come on, come on. I don't know who to thank how to thank you all for what you've done. 
Alright, light has returned to my life and with uh, and with a joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. I will think of them when I write my next song. And I will not be visiting Volant in prison, because screw Volant! Brusha, brusha, brusha! Brusha, brusha, brusha! Brusha here, back on the beach with another interview! I'm gonna kill Gavin in his cell! Oh, how do I feel how things turned out? I killed Christoph Gavin in the cell. No scoop yet, but journalism com confidence in mint condition! And quote! And then Chris Long by the chair. Help me! Help me! Someone help! I've decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside to find what to paint. But I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. The door is open. The world is waiting. Thank you. Yeah, she paints Zachary for good people. You don't do that. And then Trusy leaves. Then Mira leaves. And then basically she gets taken to a the back of a gets shown to a van. Yes, Apollo finally gets his painting. But he's backstage to Trusy. Trusy usurped him. And with that, the series is done. Okay, final thoughts, final thoughts. Like with all these attorney games, I really enjoyed playing this one. It was a whole lot of fun, except with Turnabout Serenade. Oh, that case just, that case could just go off a cliff. I'm sorry, it's horror. It's, it's decent in the beginning, don't get me wrong, but then the end, the final trial segment, they just play the freaking Guitar Serenade so many times. You have to see that video so many times. Ugh, but really... But, nevertheless, it was a good game, and, as Saz is to say, for the time being, this is going to be the final Ace Attorney game I can do, because, unless I can find a decent 3DS emulator, I won't be able to do a po I won't be able to do Dual Destinies, Spirit of Justice, or the Professor Lightning Phoenix Right crossover. But, though, if I do find those, if I do ever, if, though, if I do find the software, if I do find the technology, then, sure enough, those games will be coming. But for now, this is the final Ace Attorney game. So, basically, yeah, we're going to be moving on to another visual novel series. At least for the time being. I'll, of course, be looking into, basically, just the 3DS technology, which could prove helpful in other for other series I could potentially do in the future. But, anyways, just it was a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of joy, a whole lot of giggles. And I just had a big blast the entire time. Anyways... The date of my next series is going to be, it, the upload date for the first episode of my next series will be in the description, though, unfortunately, it's not going to be the series that I wanted it to be, because, well, I tried experimenting with it, and while I could play the game, it wouldn't be exactly a fun gameplay experience for me. Okay, so basically... Granted, I do have some potential ideas of how I could get around playing it, but like... But it would just be finicky. Okay, as for the game itself, just that isn't really an important detail. All you need to know is that it was for the DS, it and it required extensive use of the touchscreen. So much so that basically, just using a mouse or such would have just felt really, really off. But I'll have another game. I'll have another game on standby, which I'll be able to do. And anyways, with that, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this series. You're a great viewer. I'll be going for the next one. If you like this episode, like, subscribe, comment, share, do as you want. And with that, I'll see you for the first episode of my next project, which, once again, the upload date will be in the description. With that, bye.